All right, so what we got um, next is two stability categories. If you've followed us, we have our stability guide online. Um, I think that the goal of that article is to share what stability really means, what it really does from a research perspective, as well as how different companies integrate creating structure within their shoes to support a foot in different ways in theory. So you can check that out on our website. It's our guide to stability. Um, it should have something up in the upper tab to find it pretty easily, but we do think it's a pretty helpful resource, um, especially if you're working in run retail and you're new to it. It could be a nice uh, way to, to process through what types of shoes are on your shoe wall at your store. All right, so let's let's go first with what we call our stable neutral category. So this is a category that um, we we think about because sta stability does not necessarily mean it used to mean that you needed this post like this denser foam or some kind of plastic piece through the midfoot um, on the medial side on the inside of the foot. Now that's not necessarily the case. There are shoes that are technically neutral shoes. These categories are getting blurred, but that have a, a platform that makes it relatively stable, meaning maybe it's a wider base on the bottom of the foot, maybe it has some sole flaring, maybe it has some sidewalls, maybe the geometry is such that it moves the foot forward really well. So let's start with our best stable neutral shoe of the year. Matt, let's kick it off with you and see what you got. So I, I'm going to go, this shoe gets another <laughs> award because again, all the things you mentioned when it comes to stable neutral, you can either do this well or not so well. And this shoe hit every single box well and there's a couple reasons why so my again for stable neutral shoe of the year was the new balance fresh foam more v4 and there because it it again they did everything great that i'd want in a neutral shoe but made it incredibly stable without being intrusive on the foot so it's a shoe that i've gotten feedback from from not just myself but from patients and from people <clears> that i've, I've kind of got like suggested it to feel stable, people that needed more stability, people that didn't and didn't feel that intrusiveness. So first thing, the the outsole flare is done very, very well. There's a slight posterior lateral bevel here, so geometry is done really well. The sidewalls on both sides of the shoe are done phenomenally well. They're very high, but are non-intrusive and work really well, again, with that concept of guidance. And they actually move down slightly into the forefoots for those who need it there. Another great thing, they did not narrow the midfoot. It stays fairly wide, the outsole's wide, and it's still on the lighter end for a shoe like this at 10.4 ounces. So I've taken this up to like 15, 16 miles, which is kind of my max right now, had zero issues with fatigue of some of those more intrinsic muscles of my foot and hip. So it's it does it does stable neutral very 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 well. Yeah, I I think that's a great a great pick. Mine's actually somewhat similar with a couple major differences, but I think when I think of stable neutral, the shoe since its first first iteration has kind of been the definition of stable neutral for me in a lot of ways. And that is uh, the Saucony Endorphin Shift. This is version three and I'm holding the Run Shield version, which I'm actually a big, I'm a better, I'm a bigger fan of their Run Shield this year than I am of their regular versions. I think the uppers just fit a little bit better for me in the forefoot and are super comfortable, especially as I'm going into winter, I'm loving the, the warmer upper. But what makes this shoe stable neutral again is a lot of the things that Matt just talked about, but it's got a really wide platform underfoot. Uh, but what the shift does is that it kind of creates this plastic cup that goes around its sidewalls and creates this cradle for the heel. So it's a very structured heel without having a very hard heel counter. So above this plastic piece here, um, there's a little bit of softness in the heel counter, which keeps some of that comfort for the instep feel. The what, What's interesting is the change for V3 is they got rid of the plastic piece that was diving down on the medial side and they just exchanged it for this C cup, which I think is is, a solid, I, I kind of missed that. I loved the, I loved that design of the external heel counter dipping down into the foam, but they, they do that here with this, with this plastic cup and just having that as a, as a part of structuring. It just adds more resistance to the foam and the posterior side of the shoe, um, which decreases the amount of compression that it can go through. It increases the resistance to compression, both medially and laterally. I think the big difference for this shoe is the forefoot flexibility. So for the more V4, it's got a relatively flexible forefoot, whereas this one does not really have any. So when I think about patient populations, this is actually a shoe that I recommend to a lot of people who need some sort of stable platform and also are having issues where they 
they they can't go through a lot of big toe extension. So this has a nice rocker. It operates off of the rocker, but it's not this aggressive carbon plated shoe. It has no plate, but it still has a stiff enough forefoot that people who don't have extension to their great toe, they can utilize this shoe. So this is actually one of the shoes that I recommend to my patients probably more than any other. And that's again, for specific patient populations, but it's just the people who end up coming in for therapy. Um, and, and I just see this as a pretty versatile tool because of the structure of the shoe, as well as the rocker that it operates off of. Matt, you have something to add? I'd say on a follow-up to that, well, the more, these are two very close to, and I would just, I agree with everything Nathan said. The only thing I would add to that is while the more tends to fit wider for those patients or people that have a little bit more narrow foot, for me, the Shift 3 has fit more snug than previous versions. And that can be great for a lot of people who, yes, a lot of us, some people have wide feet. Some people have very narrow feet and have a very hard time finding a, sh a shoe that's a little more secure that can also be stable neutral. So this has been a go-to one for that. It's not a narrow fit, but it's just a little bit more snug that I think some people with a little more narrow feet might right. do really well and that are looking for all the components that Nathan just talked about. Totally. And just a couple of specs on this one, since we haven't talked about this shoe yet. Um, the Shift 3 is 39, I'm, I'm hoping this is right, yeah, 39 millimeters in the heel, 35 in the forefoot, the regular, not the run shield version, but the... Um, but the regular version three is 9.4 ounces and it's coming in at $150. So um, again, it's in that hundred and f I feel like what we're seeing most typically, it's rare now, to, unfortunately, to see a $120 shoe. It's kind of 140 to 160 are kind of these, that's your typical, typical pricing. And then it just goes up from there. Um, so when you see shoes for 120 and below, it's kind of a steal now, which is a sad thing to say, but that's where we're at. David, what do you got for your stable neutral? Yeah, so when I think of a stable neutral shoe, I'm usually thinking of something that is still in that neutral <coughs> category. Like the shoe runs neutral. It's definitely a neutral shoe, but there's a couple of elements that just kind of give a little bit of touch to help with keeping a stable platform and keep you centered. Um, for me, my number one this year would be the On Cloud Go. The Cloud Go, it doesn't have a super wide base. It doesn't have any dramatic sidewalls. I mean, this is still very much a neutral shoe, but I think it's balanced out pretty well overall. So when we take a look at geometry, like it's rounded out pretty well, very centered. It has like the groove that comes down the midline there. Base is still, you know, f I mean, it's ne it's neutral, you know, it's nothing like overly wide, but it's not narrow either. When you go through the midfoot, everything in the upper is balanced, locks down well, doesn't stretch too much, locks your foot in pretty well. And when I think of stability too, I think of confidence and where I can take the shoe. And it's a shoe that I can pretty much take wherever I want, where I didn't feel that with the Shift or with the uh, more V4, where mm -hmm. I didn't like, I, like there's just certain areas like I'm not going to take it there where I could take this pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. that's why and the I cloud could... go and it does have the plate in the midsole as well. So it does kind of firm that up a tiny bit, even though it's still a little bit of a softer ride underfoot. So more balanced. Yeah. Um, Nothing overly dramatic about this shoe, you know, um, but it's a shoe that does it well for me. And it's a shoe that I reach for pretty frequently. And it kind of rounded out that top three trainer list for me, too. Yeah. And I think about um, you talk about confidence going on different trails. I think the shift three, it's a pretty high stack shoe. Right. So despite having that wider platform. I wouldn't want to bring that thing on the trails either. You know, it's it's a nice, niche, stable, neutral shoe for the road kind of thing, or like the granite trails that I go on around here, crushed granite. So, yeah, yeah. And then just real quick, honorable mention here, Evo Ride Three. So, I know you had like the new says, kind of like your honorable mention, right? Yeah. I was just gonna say my honorable mentions the new, they're the same shoe, lower with... plat. Yeah, same same shoe, different upper. Um, <laughs> But basically, firmer EVA platform, good sidewalls integrated, some forefoot uh, sole flaring going on there. You just feel confident in the shoe. Like when mm -hmm. you're on the road, it, you know exactly what you're doing, where your foot's going, and it's very rhythmic with the stride. And so that's my reason why it's there. And that yeah. would, it was close. I mean, it's very close call between these two. Yeah. But. Yeah, this shoe, the Trinusa is just a fantastically safe platform. So simple. There's just nothing, no no frills. It's just an EVA base. It's got the perfect amount of rocker and I think the perfect amount of flexibility through the forefoot to be something that is structured enough to help you move forward. 